Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fortress of Comic News, episode 223. I am one of your hosts, Chris, alongside my returning co-host, Mike. I've, I've been gone, I've been here, I've left, I've come back several times now. Uh, probably, like, I'd say I've probably had more comebacks than, like, the Kiss reunion tours or something like that. You're getting there. You're getting close. Yes, it's, now it's becoming a meme at this point, but <laughs> I, I'm glad I could be back for hopefully quite a bit of time now without any interruptions. Unless we find out how good the Wi-Fi is over in Europe, but we'll, uh, we can work through these issues. Um, but yeah, what's uh, what I miss? What the hell happened? I got podcast royalty to replace you. That's what happened. You know, only the best to replace me. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I heard. You know, that's all I heard. But uh, today on the show, everyone, we have a very special guest, um, Winston Gambro. A little bit of a delay on his end, but we got through the interview and talked about all his awesome uh, projects that he's doing. So check his website out and all that good stuff. Really cool, dude. Yeah. Uh, glad, glad we could promote his stuff. Yeah, for the first, like, I think it's the first minute when we really realize it's because it didn't pop in until we started recording because that's yeah. how this stuff works, everybody. Yep. But uh, once we get past that, it, it works out pretty fine. There's some delay issues, but I mean, I thought it came out pretty good. Yeah, you, you know, these are the things you don't learn. You, 200 episodes in, you can't prepare for these things. It's, you just got to work with it on the fly, you know, it's, there's no turning back at that point. You just got to get it done, you know. Listen, I'm proud of the fact that we've only lost three episodes. Out of the and, 200, over 200 something, yeah. Yeah, and actually it's three and a half because I have lost an interview when you weren't, when you were out of town. Oh, okay. But <laughs> <laughs> still, I'm proud of that fact because we've done 223 episodes now and that's all we've lost. Of course, I say this now and we're going to lose this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you completely jinxed us. I do want to say before we lose the episode, um, I you know when I travel for work, I try to stop in a new comic shop in you know every city or town that I'm in for every at least once a trip. Um, and I, I tweeted about it. If everybody goes and checks out my Fortress Ricker Twitter, um, but I found a really cool shop outside of Detroit, um, and I can't. I think it was Comic City. But I can't find it right now. But anyways, that sounds right. Yeah, uh, really cool shop. A lot of aftershock stuff. A lot of uh, vault comics. Always really cool to see uh, indie with the DC and Marvel stuff. And they did something interesting. I you know every shop you go into is differently organized. Like you know you get some places by publisher. When you do it by publisher, you usually have a giant ass wall of DC, a giant ass wall of Marvel, and then like the indie section is like the size of a door. Um, but this place had all their comics like laid out in like five rows and they had the indie stuff. Everything was alphabetical by title, which was, I mean, it was great because like I, I got to just go through everything and be like, oh yeah, the good Asian. I haven't read that yet. Oh, um, this new book by Aftershock is out. This new book by Vault is out. And they kind of intermingled everything together. And I thought that was kind of nice. So everything at the same level, you know? That's how our, well, my local comic shop, your ex-local comic shop does it. And that's, I've mm -hmm. always thought that's the best way. Yeah. So everything's yeah. together. Right. Because sometimes people will just go to that DC or the, the big two wall and, or the image, like image is getting its own wall now pretty much. And they don't really, you don't get to see those cool covers like intermingled with everything. Um, and I think that, I don't know, it's, it really helps the, the indie comic scene. Or the smaller publishers, at least. Yeah. Um, so I got I got quite a few books to to talk about uh, at the end of the show, and man, I, I I can't talk you know good enough things about that Comicsology um, Unlimited because those books that they're putting out for free, like the free trades, I'll, I'll, every one of them that I've read has been great. So kudos to them. That's good to hear. Yeah. I watched a few movies this week too. I've been Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. What did we watch? what did you watch? So I'll start with I know we have one in common because everybody mm -hmm. has this in common. 
But the one that we probably don't have in common, I finally got around to watching America the Motion Picture. Yeah, I can't say that I got to that one. <laughs> what? Give me the lowdown. I don't even know what that's about. What? Is, what? So it's it's a lot of fun. It's really funny. If you have even a little bit of knowledge of like U.S. history, you're nope. gonna get a lot of good jokes out of it. Mm-hmm. Um. But let me just let me set the stage with like the first 10 minutes of this movie. Okay. And if you're not sold, I don't know what <laughs> earth you live on. So we we meet our hero, George Washington. And he goes to meet up with his best friend Abraham Lincoln. This is in 1772. Um and they go to the Ford Theater to see a play when they are uh, attacked by uh, a man Known as, uh, I forgot his name now, and this ruins my whole story. Is it Benedict a... Benedict uh, Arnold. They oh. are attacked by Benedict Arnold. Wow. And Benedict Arnold turns into a werewolf and kills Abe Lincoln. This sparks the American Revolution. Is this like an animated movie, or is this all like live this, action? This is an animated movie. It, the animation reminds me somewhat of like Venture Brothers. Okay, that's pretty Actually, funny. To the point where, like, George Washington looks like uh, um, the bodyguard from Venture Brothers. It's been so Oh, Brock? Much. Brock, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, there's, dude, there's so much good in there. Like, Ice Cube plays a blacksmith. That's awesome. Um, they turn, was it Tesla? No. Nikola Tesla? The other guy. Um, Edison? Edison. Edison mm-hmm. is an Asian woman, because why not? Why not? <laughs> um that's so funny it's it's awesome like dude the the battle the final battle like where uh so the british are coming and george washington's standing on top of a mountain and he creates the national anthem <laughs> free bird oh my god <laughs> Amazing. Which, ins- which inspires the country to come and fight for him mm-hmm. and uh <laughs> As the British are coming, there's these, you know those double-decker buses they have in Britain? Yeah. There's those, but they're designed to look like AT-ATs. Oh, my God. Coming down, and then Big Ben comes and <laughs> transforms into a mech. That's amazing. It's, it's fucking nuts, and I loved it. It was so goofy and weird. I recommend it. If you have okay. any kind of sense of humor about this shit, because there are there's some like jokes about like history in there. Right. Um, it's a lot of fun. I will say I enjoy drunk history, so this this sounds like I would. It's an, it's goofy enough where I'd probably enjoy it. It's not like you have to have a history degree. You don't right. have to be Stephanie Phillips getting your degrees in history, everybody. But <laughs> nice, nice shout out. But uh, if you have like, even if you paid attention during U.S. history in high school, you're going to get some good jokes out of it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. What if you failed AP government like I did? I I mean, you should have come to your friend Chris to help you out because yeah. I was supposed to minor in government, but <laughs> yeah, now he's a major in podcasting everybody. Yeah. Um, and then I, then I watched black widow. All right. Before we talk about black widow, let me give a shout out to a couple of movies. You probably haven't watched, uh, the Karen Gillan movie, um, gunpowder milkshake is on Netflix and it's a mixture of like, Charlie's Angels. I hate. I hate when. I hate when people do this. I'm such. I'm such a hypocrite because I always tell. I hate when people like combine things. Like it's a. You know, put the stuff in a blender, and this is what you get. But for real, it's like Charlie's Angels, <laughs> uh, like a Quentin Tar- like Charlie's Angels and Kill Bill kind of. Um, it's got like that Quentin Tarantino style like fight scenes. Um, basically, she's a. She's like the. She's like a John Wick. Oh my god! I referenced another movie. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. The color palette's really interesting. You can tell a lot of the stuff's low budget. Um, there's some wonky stuff happening here and there, but overall it's a fun movie. Uh, Paul Giamatti is in it. Um, you could tell they cre- try to create like a secret order of assassins and basically she kills a crime Lord's son and then he's trying to kill her, which is, uh, which I think is like that's pretty much the plot to John Wick, isn't it, or something like? like, or he no, he goes after a crime lord son. Either way, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's on Netflix, so if you have Netflix, you can watch it for free. Um, 
I, yeah. So fun story. Mm-hmm. I went to get my comics this week. Yep. And we're sitting around talking, bullshitting about different things. And the, you know, the owner always has like a movie or something going on in the background. Yep. And we watched the trailer to the Dynasty Warriors movie. Oh, like based on the video game? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to watch this movie just because it looks so bad that it's probably hilarious. Yeah. But so we watched that and he's just like, nah, I can't do it. And then he <laughs> found, then he hit the random because yeah. you know how like fucking oh, Netflix yeah, like has a, a random button. There's now. a shuffle button that I, I I said to myself, "Who the hell would use this button?" Apparently, Craig does. Yep. Okay. And uh, that's the movie that came up because we Go- literally were watching this, and I'm just like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. And he's and whatever he said, bubblegum milkshake, or the fuck it's called, <laughs> gunpowder milkshake, gunpowder yeah. milkshake. Yeah. And he said that, and I was like, okay. And I watched it for like five ten minutes, and I was like, this is not a Chris movie. <laughs> Are you serious? You don't like Kill Bill or any of those movies? Um, so <laughs> I always get a lot of shit for this. The pretty much the only Tarantino movie I've seen that I don't like is Kill Bill. Oh well, that's fine. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. I can get not, where like those camera shots and that like it, like it's not for everybody. It's. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I don't, no, yeah, it's yeah. not for me. It's right. It's, it's based on a style that's just like. You and our friend Craig have a similar like style of things you like, mm-hmm. you know, like that goes into kung fu and a lot of Asian yeah, right. cinema and stuff, right? And that's what Kill Bill's based on. Where I'm right. just like, if it doesn't have Godzilla in it, it's not Asian cinema to yeah. me. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> love kung fu cinema, and I fucking love it. So. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and then I just got done. I just actually, well, I'm almost done with the second one. Uh, the whole Fear Street thing that Netflix has been putting out, which is based on the R.L. Stein Fear Street books. Oh. Um, the first one, 1994, and then 1978. But the third one came out Friday, which is like 1666. It's it's an anthology series, but it's all based on around one town that's there's a curse uh, by this witch, and like every so often, like people are possessed to become like serial killers, and then like. You know, it happens in 1994. The first one's awesome because there's so many 90s references. Like, even the noises that you hear in the background, like, um, someone barges into, like, a hospital and all the old people are watching Unsolved Mysteries. And, like, you can hear the the old host voice of, like, this is Unsolved Mysteries. I'm like, holy shit. It, like, brought me back. <laughs> um, so there's It's it's really funny. Like, he like the, the younger brother is... Um, you know, like he's got, he's like blasting Iron Maiden and like playing video games and he's like playing Contra. And uh, it's just really cool. So, you know, the first one establishes this like overarching plot. And then we get a little bit into the glimpse of what happened, what they reference in the first one and the second one. And then I'm guessing the third one is like the origin of the witch. I haven't gotten to that part, but they're all really fun movies. Um, the second one has some characters who recognize uh, one of them's from Stranger Things, the redhead girl from uh, Stranger Things. And uh, yeah, it's great. I, I think it's a lot of fun. I think Netflix is doing good work. Um, this, this is the stuff we like. So a lot more of that. And it didn't seem like it. I mean, it's not a crazy plot, but it's still like a fun movie to watch. I think it's, it's like a twist on a slasher film. Cause a lot of people don't get into slasher films, but this mm-hmm. is like a, it's a little more depth to it, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. You might like it. You should check it out. Maybe uh, I will. Maybe right. I will. All right. Now, Black Widow. We watched Black Widow. Um, I Okay. Overall, Black Widow, it was it was a good movie. It was a movie that, like I enjoyed. I enjoyed it just about as much as Gunpowder Milkshake. Um, and that's not a bad thing for me. It... I didn't like. Did this change my view on the whole Marvel universe? No. Uh, Loki did. The thirty minutes I watched of Loki, if someone was like, "Okay, you can watch one thing for the rest of your life. It's either thirty minutes, or you know, one one more Marvel thing. What is it? The whole Black Widow movie, or thirty minutes of the last Loki episode? I'm picking the Loki episode because that shit was way more interesting to me. Um, the upsetting thing about the the Black Widow film to me was a lot of the shit they pulled. I know for a fact. Okay, I know this for a fact. 
if they pull that shit in a DC film, and they have, DC has gotten shit on for it so many times, okay? Like, where do I start? The the awful CGI in some parts, because it was pretty bad, okay? It was it was pretty bad. I can name one awful CGI moment, but there's, yeah. There's a few. Um, the Some of the lines in that movie were, I mean, the fighting was awesome. The fighting was really good. Uh, I I can't believe that I'm really appalled that Disney got Harvey Weinstein out of jail to cast him <laughs> as a movie villain. It really sickens me that, you know, all this controversy around Harvey Weinstein and you get him out of jail to play in, in a, like his first ever cast movie villain role, like... Uh... <laughs> Wait for Bill Cosby and Hawkeye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> one shot, one kill, and he's like, "Zaba zaba put it, everybody!" <laughs> like, oh my god, no! But I mean, all jokes aside, the the one line, I don't know if I was like you know too baked for that shit or what, but the one line that really got me was like, I'm pretty sure, and I gotta go back and like clip this and like post it on our YouTube page, but um. The villain says the most abundant, I took advantage of the most abundant resource the world has to offer. And then he says, girls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like, it was like a record scratch moment for me. I was like, what did, did someone really just write that? And like the climax of the movie, <laughs> like, um, it was like little stuff like that, that I was kind of just like, okay. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's a fun film. Uh, Scarlett Johansson's awesome. She is Black Widow, uh, and I was—I guess I didn't realize where it took place in the timeline. It's right after Civil War. Yeah, I went, I took my father to see it, and I had to explain to him. He's like, "Isn't like why we're we're pulling up to the theater?" Yeah, because I went to a theater to see this too. Oh wow, nice. Um, I didn't do the thing I said I was going to do. I actually mm -hmm. went to the theater. Yeah, but uh. He's like, isn't Black Widow dead? Like, why is there a movie? And I was like, Dad, it takes place before all that. It's pretty right. cool. But yeah. um, I'll say, when I turn my analytic brain off, mm -hmm. it's just a fun spy movie. Right. Which I was really happy about. Yeah. And that's like, I want more movies. Like, not even Marvel movies. I just want more spy movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, right, I, right. I miss that shit. Like, The Man from Uncle, that movie, that's. That was the same, like, I, I feel like that was the same vein of, like, people didn't really care about it. See, I thought that was a fun movie, too. Like, yeah. yeah. But anyways. But yeah, we're the only two people who want it. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. The, so the, the bad CGI move, moment for me was when she fell off the, like, roof <laughs> and, like, hit 20 times. And I'm just like, is she a super soldier? Because yeah, I right. thought she was just, a, like, a chick that right. knows kung fu or something. Um <laughs> And like, cause I'm sitting there, I'm like, she's dead. Like, she's dead right now. <laughs> she's so dead. The movie, you can cut the credits, the movie's over. She just died right there. Yeah. Which, yeah. So I, and I'll turn that off. Move on with it. The pheromones. That, yeah. The pheromones pissed me off to no end because I was just like, really? Like, you smell weird, so she can't punch you. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, if she was across the room, could she shoot him? That that was my yeah. like. I don't. And, I I don't get that whole part. And the whole yeah. Well, and the whole thing was like, so pheromones are keeping you from killing this dude. Mm -hmm. So you break your nose, so you can't smell him. Why don't you just put like? Why don't you just do this? Like, plug your nose <laughs> you and shoot nose. him. Like, yeah. right. So that bugged me. <laughs> Mind you. I'm saying all this, and I'll still say I really like this movie. Yeah, no, right. I'd watch it again. Right. But and then okay. I didn't mind. So I loved uh, Black Widow Jr. Um, she was Widow. phenomenal. Yeah. I don't. I don't need to know her name. I'll learn yeah. her name in Hawkeye. Yep. She was phenomenal. I actually ended up loving Red Guardian, mm -hmm. and I love the fact that they toyed with us by him being like, "I fought Captain America," and the right. guy's like, "Well, he was in ice when you said he fought him." Yeah. But we all know. He went back in time yep. and lived a life. So he could have fought him. Mm -hmm. I love that. And the guy's arm that he broke was uh, Ursa Major. So. Explain. Ursa Major is a, a man who's a part of the, basically the Russian Avengers. Mm -hmm. And he plays a big role in a book I'm going to talk, or actually I talked about last week, the newest Avengers comic. And uh, 
he's a mutant that turns into a giant bear that drinks vodka. Oh. So we have, and they call him Ursa in the movie. And then they've confirmed after the fact that this is Ursa Major. Whether they're going to use him or not, probably not. But we have our first mutant. Nice. First confirmed mutant. Nice. So I love that. I love everything around Red Guardian. I thought he was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was pretty great. Um, another, the, the last thing. So I don't want to get, like, this, this isn't meant to be political, but, like, the girl power thing didn't bother me. I, I mean, that's, it's fucking Black Widow. I get it. Right, right. And I thought it suited the movie really well, how they handled everything. That said, I did not like the Taskmaster thing. Oh. And it's, I, I don't want to say it's because it's like Taskmaster's and a chick, but like, it's not Tony Masters and it bugged me. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you're just, that's like the reveal of like Green Arrow is a completely different character. So like you watch yeah. that character. I don't, I think the thing that bothered me, like Taskmaster wasn't always like a, Taskmaster wasn't like controlled, like a half robot, right? No, Taskmaster is a merc. Like the powers are similar. I like the way they handled like her powers. Yeah, and I like the way that they explained her powers. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Taskmaster is a mercenary. He's right. not mind control. Yeah, I thought that bothered me more than it being a woman. You know what I mean? I it's I don't even want to say like it, go ahead and make make it like if it would have been what's the t- the female version of Tony? I don't know, but yeah, let's say it was Debbie masters yeah, yeah <laughs> like, right right like that would have for some reason in my head that would have been better just because it in me it just bugged me it's not it's hard to explain it's not the yeah. fact that it's a woman it's a fact that's a different character right right exactly yeah that it's someone completely not you know out of continuity and also like like you said like the thing i knew about taskmaster was it was a cool mercenary for hire right like yeah. almost like deathstroke where and it's like Taskmaster can exist on their own. I'm using there because it's not gender specific, but as the character can exist on their own and like be a badass and not be have to be controlled by someone. And yeah. it's like someone that villains will be, you know, sought after by villains or something, but whatever. That being said, it's a stupid fanboy thing because mm-hmm. when before I knew the reveal, yeah, when when she's fighting and when she's doing her missions and doing all this stuff i was like this is awesome this is awesome this is awesome why isn't it tony masters <laughs> <laughs> yeah right so it's just it's a stupid fanboy thing it's not a, right i hope it comes across that way <laughs> like it's not the fact like oh damn it why is it a chick like i don't yeah. care about that it's right just... um and i will say the whole th- one last thing uh the oh man i can't the I forget what Avengers movie it is where they reference like her and Hawkeye, Black Widow and Hawkeye say we're going to do this like we did in blank, like this locate, like this area. And I can't remember what area it is, but in that movie, we find out that like Black Widow, like killed children or something like that. Right. Like she like caused a. Oh, when she killed the when she allegedly killed the guy that ran the red room. Right. Yeah, yeah. The target was actually the daughter, mm-hmm. which was the connection to because the daughter becomes Taskmaster. Right. It was huge spoilers, everybody. But yeah. fuck you if you didn't Whatever. see it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's just I. It, there's something about it that yeah, just. But and then, all so, in all, really yeah. like the movie, and I I wish I could remember her name, but the actress that plays her um, Black Widow's sister really good was. Awesome. Yeah, she was really good. Yeah, I loved um, her. I want her more action stuff. Yeah, well, she's I mean, in the after credit scene, we are going to get her as part of the Thunderbolts, right? So, at least yeah, it seems like or Dark Avengers or whatever. Dark Avengers, doing, yeah, whatever, something they're doing. Um, but yeah, I think it was really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a fun movie as much as I shit on it. I just shit on it because I know people love to shit on DC, and it's only because DC hasn't had a good streak of movies like Marvel has. Um, it's I was having this conversation with I had this conversation with people all the time actually, but what it is is like when these little things pop up in Marvel, whether I mean there's gonna be haters out there, but Marvel has done good for so long to the point where even their like okay movies are still better than a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. Um, we forgive them a little bit more, whereas like 
we still haven't recovered from Martha. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? True. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's why, like, I really hope that uh, the sparkly Batman is better because I'm like, if if you can do sparkly Batman right and do it well, mm-hmm. then that could potentially just forgive all sins and we can move on. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Um, anyways, let's talk about uh, the TV news before we keep every- – <laughs> keep everybody here with all my gripes um half an hour into the show <laughs> yeah uh we finally got a teaser for the why the last man series uh premiere date september 13th that's fairly soon uh and we don't see anything no. except for a man with a monkey on his shoulder and that's really all we need to see so <laughs> it's a it's a general plot so you've read yeah. why the last man right, right? correct oh yeah uh-huh because i have not Mm. But I know the plot line, and that's right. what this teaser gave. All the men like, are dead. There's one man left. Yeah, I'm surprised with how close it is that we didn't get like I'm. Sh- I say this, and like next week we're gonna get a big trailer. But I'm right. surprised by being so close that this wasn't just an all out trailer and announce it. But there's a plan somewhere. Do you remember who's releasing this? Is this Netflix? FX. FX. Oh, FX. It says, it says streaming, so I don't know where it's gonna be streaming on a. I don't. FX must have their own thing now. That or it's Hulu because they're aren't yeah, they Fox. Yeah, or no Fox. I don't even. Maybe, know. I don't even know. It's so confusing. Yeah, because Disney Plus own has who. I, it's I because Disney there. owns Fox. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's it's getting it's getting crazy. Um, pretty soon they're gonna have podcasts just about streaming services. Uh, You're excited about this, right? Oh yeah, I cannot wait. I just I want to see a trailer. Um, see I. <laughs> I'm I I was really excited for the Why the Last Man show, like when they announced this when I was in college. <laughs> like, I mean, they had talks about like someone had bought the rights back when I was. This is like I don't know a while ago, and <laughs> I was exhausted. I exhausted all my excitement about it then. I'm really excited for it now. I mean, that let me see a trailer so I know that it's actually coming. Yeah, it wasn't uh, like Jor- Jordan, Gr- uh, Robin from Dark Knight Rises. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Jordan, yes, Michael uh, or Joseph Gordon Levitt. Joseph Gordon Levitt. I'm mixing names up. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't he connected to this at one point? Like, uh, he might have been. I know he was supposed to be in Sandman, and then Sa- like Sandman's another one that's been talked about for ten plus years that hasn't gone anywhere. Um, yeah, I'm surprised we haven't got a Why the Last Man series sooner, but here it is. Yep. Uh, during the credits scene. Uh, the last episode of Disney Plus Loki series, we're given confirmation there'll be season two and uh, ends on quite a bit of cliffhanger. So we're going to talk about Loki, everybody. Um, so. Awesome. I mean, the episode. I, I like I. The multiverse is canon, you know, the multiverse is screwed. There's a huge like, of course, why? Why? Why wouldn't Loki start a huge multiverse war before Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, right? Now it's starting to make sense here. Um, the way they did the intro of the episode was fantastic, right? Yeah. Like, they did the sizzle reel thing, and then they are like, but this is just one universe. And I was like, holy, sh- sold. They could have showed me that in the episode. I would have been like, that's it. That's, you know, <laughs> I- I'm satisfied. Uh, I mean... The guy who plays, I can't, I don't have his name, but we knew who it was going to be who plays um, King the Conqueror. He plays Kang, uh, which we find out in the episode, he's not the evil one. He's just the, if I had to, if I had to pick a alignment for him, I would say like chaotic neutral, yeah. right? Jonathan Majors, by the way. Jonathan Majors. Thank you. Um, his alignment is definitely chaotic neutral where we're getting chaotic bad or something for the chaotic evil for the, for the next iteration. Um, I mean, most of the episode was this the Loki and Sylvie sitting at a desk with him <laughs> talking about the multiverse. And it, it seemed like a cop, like I, I was like going through my head. I'm like, this could be a comic book panel. You know what I mean? Like just them talking with Kang at his desk and at the end of time, while he's wearing a purple robe. I'm like, this seems so comic booky to me and I love it. Um, am I missing? I mean, 
you could talk about more. I just I was so excited about the multiverse stuff, and then the fact that we're getting what if directly after this, so we know that like what if is just stuff that's happening from all these branches of the multiverse. It has to be like. Yeah, so you're saying they're sitting down, they're having that whole conversation. That's like 90% of this episode. Yeah. And it was riveting. Oh, yeah. And it's riveting, like you said, uh, yeah, the multiverse and everything, but I'm just watching Jonathan Majors. Yeah, he's And he so is good. such a good actor. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. You got to watch Lovecraft con- uh, Country, County. Uh, I can't. I can never remember the it's, name. It's been like eight months. I think I'm still four episodes in. Yeah. But I loved him in that, too. Yeah, he's so good. Um, so it's funny to me that like people after the fact when i'm watching didn't really listen to him talk because Mm -hmm. people were getting mad about things right but like so they say in that that kang we're just gonna call him kang because he's fucking kang yep kang is born he discovers a way to get between the rifts in the multiverse Mm-hmm. And that's when he meets all the other Kangs and creates the multiversal war. Yeah. So everybody out there that was telling me all week, like, it doesn't make any sense that it went thousands of years without a multiverse war and then all of a sudden there's one. It's because nobody could figure out how to open up the fucking portals. Right. <laughs> I had to get that anger out real quick. Yep. Um, get that comic book science <laughs> anger out. It's because they couldn't open the portals. Don't you understand? <laughs> <laughs> it's, and well, this is this is funny after complaining about Black Widow about stupid shit for yeah, a while. But, right, like, it makes yeah. me mad when we complain about stupid shit. Yep. But anyways, <laughs> so that happens, and what we realize is that this is Kang, but this is a variant of Kang, and it's right. basically Kang Prime. And when they kill Kang, and he says it there, like, listen, either you can take over and like shit goes the way it is, and we're fine, or you can kill me, and I'll just be back here. So whatever. Right. Yeah. And they end up killing him, which creates the multiverse and all that. And they go back, and it was fucking bone chilling when he goes up to Owen Wilson, Mor- Morbius, and yeah. uh, like tries to tell him, like, oh, we fucked up, we did wrong, blah, blah. And he just looks at him and goes, hey, who are you? Yeah. And I was just like, oh, best friends don't know each other anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. But also. And real who- quick, yeah. Loki is going to be the only one that remembers right everything that happened. And and this is going to be outside of outside of the time cops place, right? I mean, everybody's not going to remember Loki. Like if he gets put back in the timeline is is everything going to be messed up? Like if he goes back I to think his, they'll, I, don't know. I I mean, that's a good question. I I assume that everything happens the way it did up until Endgame. I'm going to assume that for now, until I'm told otherwise. So people know Loki, but I think it's going to be interesting when we get Loki back Mm and like Thor or whatever, and they're just like, you died. What do you, where are you? Right. (laughs) And nobody's going to believe him. Yeah. It's also important that the last shot they show after that is zooming up to the statues of the timekeepers, mm-hmm. and it's just Kang. It's yeah. Kang the Conqueror. It's Kang the Conqueror now, yeah. So now Kang's running TVA. Um, also, now we don't need an explanation for like the Spider-Man movie. Yeah. You know, like whoever whoever they bring back from old movies, like we don't need an explanation. Like the multiverse war has begun. So, actually, before I go there, they have said now that what if is different branches of the multiverse. So, what if is like actually an important MCU thing, right? Yeah. Which I love because a I love what if to begin with. Mm-hmm. I said last week like I'm not so hot on the animation, but I'm sure yeah. I'll get past it. That's all right. Um, but one thing I was thinking about is for one we basically rebooted we knew 52 the the mcu Mm -hmm. i think that uh, nobody's caught on to that i mean some people have but like people aren't catching on to that and i also think that this kind of confirms my thoughts that the x-men might not necessarily be in the mcu proper Mm -hmm. it might be their own multiverse yeah which then leads me to (laughs) This is going to take 15 years to prove me right or wrong, but right. I'm still going to go with it. 
which I think then is means that the next big thing, the thing that's going to be the end game of this stage of the MCU mm-hmm. is Secret Wars. AKA Marvel does Crisis on Infinite Earths because we got to bring all the things together into one universe. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's, I mean, I just give me more of it. It was an amazing episode. Um, the multiverse is canon. <laughs> uh, and at the same I, time, this is the same week that I found out there was spoilers for the, the Flash movie that people leaked seeing the filming of The Flash, and there's two Barry Allens in scenes. Like, Is, is it like TV Barry Allen? Or I don't know. Say? People have just said there's two Barry Allens. I don't know who they are, or I haven't seen them, but either way, let's go. <laughs> the multiverse is around us, man. <laughs> like... It's it's a good time, and I'm. Yeah. I it's funny we we talk about Black Widow and we talk about this, and I got so much more. Even though I I could, I could find my problems with the Loki as a series, but I don't want to talk about those because yeah. I loved what I got so yeah. much. And I mean, what did we get from Jonathan Majors? He sat at a desk like eating an apple, and it was awesome. So good, like I. <laughs> he is such a good actor, man. I, that is one thing out of both of these MCU things. Jonathan Major is just so good. And mm-hmm. then um, I, I should have looked up her name when I was looking up Jonathan Majors. But Black Widow Jr., so good. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, just we're getting phenomenal. I mean, we've had phenomenal actors, but I think these two are on a different level. Like, mm-hmm. these two are going to be winning awards down the line if they haven't already. And, uh, just before we get to the interview, I just want to catch everybody up. I have a late night edition of Pat's Flash Facts. Uh, oh, I know cool. we, we haven't had one of these in a while. We, we haven't had one of these in a while. I want to catch everybody up because next week is the season finale. So um, this is these aren't my words, everyone. Okay, best episode in a long ass time. Next week is the season Liar. finale. Yeah, as you remember from last week, Barry's kids show up because we all forgot. And well as more and more Godspeed clones. So there's Godspeed clones and Barry's kids showing up. Yeah, stay with me, folks. You find out. So that, it's a really fast spider clone saga. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you find out that Godspeed is Bart's is is Bart's Thon, aka Arch Nemesis. So it's Bart Allen's, you know, Reverse Flash Thon. I don't know. Uh, you don't know why you you think that Godspeed has killed someone close to Bart Allen. Because that's what the reverse Flash did to Flash. Barry calls Wally West and Jay Garrick for help. Wally isn't available. Uh, He might show up in the next episode, maybe. Anyways, cut to Jay getting ready to help them and then gets kidnapped by Godspeed clones. Okay. Um, Turns out that Jay is the person that is close to Bart that gets killed by the real Godspeed. So they use the Jay they kidnapped to lure Bart into a trap. There's a cool fight scene. The Godspeed clones knock Bart out, and he goes into a coma. Then who but Cisco shows up to save the day? Uh, you'll remember he left a few episodes back. Okay, so they did like five episodes of Cisco leaving, and now he comes back to save the day. This is, you know, Flash. Come on. <laughs> so last episode they caught the guy August Hart, who's supposed to be the real Godspeed, but he lost his memory. Episode ends with Barry going into August's mind where he finds Godspeed waiting for him to be continued. I don't know if you guys caught all that, but what? Pat, I'm going to talk to you directly. What was my complaint about the flash? Too many speedsters. Yep. You start this with best episode in a while and then name like 80 speedsters that I don't care about. But this isn't for you though. We know a really, a really, really, really big Flash fan. He probably fucking loved this episode. <laughs> that really, really, really big Flash fan stopped watching oh, at the beginning okay. of the season okay, because good. he is sick of the same stuff I okay. am. All right, which makes me happy because I was right. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for the Flash facts, and uh, let's cut to this awesome interview we have, with Mr. Winston Gambro. We'll see everybody on the other side. All right, we're back. All right, so check his stuff out. He's got a very handy-dandy, cool website. Um, very easy to use, user-friendly, 
All his projects are up there, all his books. Mr. Winston Gambro. Really liked Overflow, too. Yeah, it was a good book. Really liked it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really like, uh, I didn't, I didn't get to tell him this in the interview, but it had like a, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, oh my God, the, um, Blade Runner, Blade Runner vibes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, especially the colors. The colors Mm -hmm. are what give that off to, at least in my opinion. Um, comic news, uh, really sad news last week, uh, and such a young guy, too. I mean, Chris and I have talked about Robson Roca a lot. Uh, we loved his art. Um, he passed away from complications due to COVID-19 last week. He's been in comics since 2010. He's worked on tons of titles across DC. Um, and Chris's favorite, as well as my fa- one of my favorites, uh, is the new 52 Earth 2 World's End uh, he got to work on, which was a fantastic book. Um, I mean, I've seen his name all over the books that I've, I was reading it for DC. So, uh, really sad to hear this. He left, you know, a family behind way too young to go. So our, uh, you know, our condolences go to his family. Um, he's such a talented guy. It's, it was really sad. It really, it really broke my heart to see that when I was uh, traveling last week. So, um, yeah, it sucks, man. Yeah, and even if I bring this to light to one person, I did my job. Um, but one of the issues was he needed blood transfusions, and mm-hmm. apparently there has been a uh, um, not a lot of blood out there for people. Uh-huh. So if you have a like typo blood or just blood, in, I mean we all have blood, so you know give it. Yep. Um, try to donate it because apparently there's some things with COVID nineteen that uh, blood transfusions are needed, which I did not know. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it makes me feel kind of like shit because my mom, like three, four weeks ago, was like, "You should go get blood because you have type O blood." And I was kind of like, "I'm too busy, mom." Mm. And moved on, mm-hmm. and uh, now I'm like, "Well, that was a shitty thing to do. I should go get blood now." <laughs> so I'm making I mean, time this week to go get yeah, blood. <laughs> you don't, you don't think about it until it happens near you, right? So, yeah. um, if you can, please donate. And yeah, what, what a, what a great. A great artist, you know. Yes. Um, Don't be like me, everybody. Go get blood. Yep. Uh, now let's move on to the rest of the news here. DC has announced that Scott Snyder's returning to Batman, kind of. Uh, Snyder, alongside Christos Gage and Donald Mustard, that's a real name, will be co-writing a one-shot addition to the Batman Fortnite comic series with artist Joshua Hickson and cover by Greg Capullo. Uh, I mean... They probably paid uh, Greg a, a boatload of money to do that. So, because I, I I swear he said he would never go back to Batman. Um, he would go back to Interiors, I think he said. Yeah, he's got other stuff to do. But he, I mean, listen, and some DC fans get mad. Some fans in general just get mad at this comment, but I find it to be real. Um, Greg said when he decided to go, when he eventually went to DC. He was given up offers by Marvel and DC. Mm-hmm. And his comment was, yeah, I went to them and said, I'm ready to sell out because I like money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. That's what he told him. So, so, yeah. And he's, I think he said he's not going to do interiors for Batman anymore, but I think covers, I mean, whatever. And technically it's not Batman. It's Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. I don't even, I, I've seen so many covers for that book on shelves and I won't even touch it. I, I will not even, I won't. Uh, but I, I and, bought all the skins in the game. <laughs> this also, if you listen to Snyder online, he says that the reason he did this was because his kid plays Fortnite and so blah, blah, blah. Right. And this is proof to something that Kevin Smith said years ago. If you have a problem with this, blame the kids. Yep. Always blame <laughs> the kids. The kids aren't all right. Um, it's true. Cliff Chang returning to DC with a new black label title called Catwoman Lonely City. The series said before issues and comes this October. Um, it has Selena Kyle returning to Gotham after a 10 year prison sentence and the death of Batman. And it could be cool, I guess. That See, this is the type of Catwoman book I would read, not just a Catwoman book, you know? This is. I read the synopsis for it because, like, Batman's. The ten-year prison sentence thing. So Batman dies at the beginning of that, and basically the event that causes her to go to prison is part of Batman's death. So now it's like Gotham no longer has caped people and all this stuff, and like Two Face is 
actually got like a real job and shit. It sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, And I, this is like you said, I would never pick up a Catwoman book willingly, Mm -hmm. willingly. Yep. But this sounds awesome. Matt Rosenberg has two new comics coming out from DC this October, both linked to infamous retailer leak from earlier this year. First up is task force Z with artist Eddie Barrows. Uh, Task Force Z has Red Hood leading a team of undead zombie villains after the events of A-Day. The team will include Bane, Manbat, the Arkham Knight, Sundowner, and Mr. Bloom. Interesting. Um, And this has to be coming out of the uh, future state. Right? Or no, this is Red Hood, I'm sorry. No, you you read Infinite Frontier number Infinite zero, Front- right? Yeah, Infinite Frontier. Sorry, for, for, that's what I meant. Not yeah, state. so when Arkham blew up and it killed people, yeah. apparently they're zombies now, because yeah. why not? Mm-hmm. Um, if you kick the... I don't know who Sundowner is, so I don't... I have no opinion on him, but you yeah. can kick Arkham Knight out of this book because he's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I read that story. I just did not like it. Yeah. Um, oh, next up is 12 issue series called DC versus Vampires. There we go, Chris. Which should be co-written by James Tinney and the Fourth with Otto by art by Otto Schmidt. Is a series of evil army vampires attempt to take over the DC universe, only to come face to face with the Justice League. I'm a little more interested in that book. I'll have to say. I'll probably be an issue behind on this because I'll wait to see what you have to tell me about. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely. I'll, I'll I'll let you know. Uh, <laughs> DC has announced that one of their first black female superheroes is getting their own series in October. Nubia and the Amazons will be written by Vita Ayala and art by Aletha Martinez. Um, So cool. Awesome. Good for Nubia. I don't really know much about the character, um, but good. Neither do I, but yeah, hopefully People are excited about this. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's not uh, our wheelhouse, but right. I'm glad that they're spotlighting some different characters. Mm-hmm. Screenwriter Matt Sin Tomlin, who recently wrote the script for the Matt Reeves upcoming Sparkly the Batman movie. Um, thanks for that, Chris. Is a three issue Batman series over at Black Label. Uh, pretty much, Chris has found out if he writes anything in the notes, I will read it. Um, the series is called Batman the Imposter, and we'll have. Art by the fa- uh, by show favorite Andrea Sorrentino. Yes, love Sorrentino's art. Uh, this series attempts to tell Batman's story as if he existed in our world. Um, interesting, because that seems to be what they're going with with the new uh, Batman movie. So um, I'm kind of interested in checking this out. This seems to be the thing that like every filmmaker wants to do. Like, yeah. Let's do the real Batman. Like a so, real okay. Joker movie. Yeah. Um, I'll wait to see. Like, honestly, this is another one where I'm like, okay, when three issues are done, if Mike tells me like it's good and I should check it out, I'll read it. But yeah. I don't know if I can pick it as much as I love Andrew Sorrentino. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, Image Comics slash Top Cow character The Darkness is returning with all new series January 2022. This is a celebration of the 25th anniversary of the character's first issue. And will be written by the series creator Mark Silvestri and drawn by Christopher Mitten. The Darkness has appeared in many of his own comic series and two his two of his own video games over the years. Yeah, I remember those video games. So if you're excited about that, that's cool. Have you ever read a Darkness comic? I have not, but I I think I played the video games back in the day. Well, at least part I, of them. I remember playing the first one, getting really confused and angry, and then leaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's what happened to me too. Um. Okay, here we go. Mark Miller making an announcement. (laughs) Buckle up. Uh, He has announced alongside Miller World Owners Netflix that his new comic series will be uh, The King of Spies. And it's said to be based on the characters created by artists that work at Netflix, which is very confusing. Miller said King of Spies will be about a retired British spy who has to face his own mortality. Sir Roland King has a brain tumor and has about six months yet to live but feels he can't leave the world until he fixes the evil that continues to plague it. The series is no official artist yet, but Miller said that he'll be working with top talent in the comics to bring the series to life. Uh, what, what, how is this relationship with Netflix and Mark Miller working? Because I'm completely confused about it. 
I I don't know, but it sounds cool. Yeah. Oh no, I love Mark Miller. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like, I'll, I'll anything Mark Miller puts out, I'm gonna read. They're like, I'm not shitting on him. All I can see is like you had a huge, great opportunity with Jupiter's Legacy. Um, they couldn't afford to make it, so then they're like, okay. Give me the artists at Netflix. Give me something you can make. And they're like, okay, well, spies are kind of low budget because they just wear suits and, you know, run around. He's like, okay, then I'll write a spy story. <laughs> like, I yeah, think, and we can't use Kingsman because that's already a right, thing. Right, that's so. already a thing. So what else could we do? Uh, I I really feel like that's what it was. They sat in a room and was just like, right. all right, like, what do you want me to do? Low like, budget ideas. You know, what like. What can we do? And you know what? Maybe it's maybe it's trash. Maybe it's awesome, but it sounds like something that I'd be down to read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll okay. definitely check this one out. I'm, I'm going to check it out for sure. I like his design too. It's cl- yeah. like that classic like spy that's just like had too much, fought yep. too many people, yeah, and see, just done. He's seen too much shit. Yeah, I love it. Um. All right, so I'm just going to go through fairly quickly the stuff I read because I, I read quite a bit while I was traveling. Um. I, I want to give a shout out, and so I bought I bought Kaiju Score uh, by Aftershock. I know you read that, right? No. Oh, I well, it's it right up my alley. You know, a, a heist movie that revolves around a kaiju. So, of course, I had to get it. Um, the Comicsology original I've been like telling everybody about uh, is called Double Walker. It's a trade that came out last week, written by uh, Michael. W. Conrad and illustrated by Noah Bailey. This is a horror book. This is probably one of the best horror comics I've ever read because the visuals are terrifying and it's rooted in like Scottish folklore. Uh, This American uh, couple is she's pregnant and they want to go on like one last vacation before like, you know, she has the baby and they become a family. Um, And some crazy shit happens where she gets like possessed and things start to happen in the town it's really messed up um it's rooted in a lot of these different evil scottish folklore tales so it was it was really interesting and really haunting um so if you're a horror fan this is right up your alley double walker it's called i don't really understand how the comiXology originals work because i have a lot of friends that would like this that don't have comiXology so i don't know if this book is attainable uh anywhere else if you don't have um if you don't have unlimited, you have to pay for it. Right. It's only $6, too. It's really cheap. And then we talked about this a while ago, because I know the chip book, um, the cell phone one. Yep. Uh, fuck, I can't remember the name, but it doesn't matter. They're being published physically by Dark Horse. Oh, okay. Cool. They just come out like a year later, but they're, you know, at least they're available. Um, okay. I read Batman Superman. Uh, I think I was 10 that you read. Uh, did we talk? We talked about Barbaric, or you talked about Barbaric. I read Barbaric. I love it. You were right. I this is right up my wheelhouse. Um, awesome. And you got a great cover too. I love oh that yeah, cover. that that issue I found. I didn't know they did that. Uh, this Swamp Thing. Um, the latest Swamp Thing is there's a whole story about this guy who's kind of like how Swamp Thing gets entangled in the green. This guy gets entangled in like the earth, and it happened to be like an area where there was like uh, part of like the world war happening. So he has like his like mind is lost in the war because like, it's a, it's kind of like a monument that's been there for a long time. That's, I don't know, seeing war, but anyways, the issue wraps up with um, uh, Amanda Waller and she's going to drop the suicide squad. She's going to drop a bomb in India where uh, Levi's from the new, the new um, champion of the green and they're going to drop a bomb in India just to get his attention to go. Cause they're going to kill the plant life. They're going to try to capture the swamp thing. And there's, so there's a lot of crossover with the suicide squad. Um, there's also some crossover uh, in suicide squad because now they're, there's a whole story in this issue of suicide squad about, um, Oh my god, I can't think of his name. It's the guy who Idris Elba is playing. Uh, Bloodshot? Yeah, Bloodshot. And he goes to the crime syndicate Earth. He goes to Earth 3 because Amanda Waller is pretty much using him to get recruit people from the multiverse. 
and he lands on Earth three and has to like alert her about the crime syndicate. Um, he gets captured, and then basically Amanda Waller is like, "Okay, I, I want Task Force X, the Suicide Squad, to go to that Earth and you know take care of the crime syndicate or capture them." It's really funny because uh, Blood or Blood Sport, I think. Is that his name? Blood Sport? But anyways, um, he gets a kryptonite gun and he shoots it at Ultraman because he thinks like it's like Superman and he breathes it in and gets super strong from it. So that was a pretty cool scene. Uh, Crime Syndicate number five. Um, yeah, I mean, this is like... Uh, this, this series is really good. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, you have like the remaining heroes fighting the Crime Syndicate. Um... The the big reveal here is um, there's a woman that's been working with Lex Luthor, and it ends up being um, Supergirl. Well, I guess Alter Girl. Uh, yeah. The little things in this book, too. Like, just the cover. The yep. fact that they, like, cross out crime syndicate, like they did with the DC um, Villains Month right. back in the day. Yep, yep. And it's now, like, Legion of Superheroes or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, yeah, I love that shit. Like it's, it's that just, book does the little things really yeah. well, and it's just like some good action of the, you know the uh, the Legion of Justice versus the Crime Syndicate. Um, Master of the Universe Revelations number one. Um, Kevin Smith and Rob David wrote this. Um, I don't know much about the He Man universe, but this is a pretty good story about because there's like a multiverse involved, um, and how there's this evil power i honestly don't know anything about about um about he-man's universe but there's some sorcerers as magic uh or the um there was some there was some warning that was happening from this so this monster and uh there was a reason it came to eternia like a long long time ago um and they ca- i think they capture it but as they capture it, it's Skeletor is at the end of the book saying, like, I was just about to find out its reason for being here. So now he pissed off Skeletor. Um, so here he comes. Come on, He-Man, you never piss off Skeletor. Yeah. You know that. I read uh, Skybound X. I probably won't read the rest of them just because I only liked the uh, Rick Grimes story, really. Um, like, I don't think the other stories are really worth it for me, you know? So. I got Skybound X number two here. Yeah. And we talked about it last week where I tried the Clementine story mm-hmm. in the first one. Yeah. And it just, it's, it's a YA book and YA books are always tough. Yeah. Um, at least for like us, for, you know, grown ass men. Yep. And, uh, it just wasn't for me, but I did enjoy the Rick Grimes thing. And then in this most recent issue, there was just nothing. Right. It was just like the four pages of Rick Grimes. Oh, okay. But then the next issue, I think, has the six sidekicks of Trigger, whatever the fuck it's called. It's the new Kyle Starks book. Oh, okay. And I've been, I read that book, the first issue the other day, and I really liked it. So I'll probably pick that one up just to have that story. Mm-hmm. And then issue five has the new Kirkman book that uh, he's going to be doing. Yeah, see, I don't like all that. They're making you jump so, around like from issue to issue, you know? I like the thing I like about it is that the the Otley Kirkman story, the Rick Grimes thing, that's what's sucking everybody in, right? Mm-hmm. And then he's kind of given this like spotlight to the other people that are, to be fair, working for the company that he owns, right? But right, exactly. Are still, <laughs> yeah, still are given spotlight to these other books that people may not check out, and maybe this is a way for them to check it out. Uh, so I respect that, but. Yeah, I, I do agree in the sense that it's kind of just the Rick Grimes thing that's getting me through it. Yeah. Some other books that I've read, uh, I'm I'm reading through The Good Asian. I got a few issues in. I do like that story. It's a good like detective noir um, with roots in the 1930s Asian community in California. Um, Geiger, number four. This book's really good. Um, you know, it's just they're building this whole universe and they... Uh, the main character and the people that he's saving find the, uh, it looks like the remaining people of the U.S. government to try to 
they they have like the government codes for missiles. So um, that's where they're trying to get to. Batman the Detective number four. This is the Tom Taylor Batman book. Love this book. This is great Batman story. Um, the cops have like bat, have Bruce Wayne like locked up, and he kind of realizes these aren't good cops just by how they're treating him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then by the end of the issue, he has to call in all the reinforcements. So we're getting like the whole European Batman Legion uh, recruits. Oh, did- Bring in all the guys from Incorporated. At, at, no, there's like the last scene is like a whole computer screen of like a hundred people. So everybody, that's awesome. everybody's coming. That's- uh, Hailstone is a book that's another comicsology original. Really good story about you would love this, Chris. Um, it's during like the Confederacy. It's during the war. This, this. Um, I do love the Confederacy, Mike. <laughs> well, no, I mean like no this is during the Civil War. I'm sorry, during the Civil War. <laughs> Um, the Confederate army has this like weird factory they built in this like middle of nowhere town. And they kind of say that they're doing it for the troops. Um, meanwhile, there's some, there's a Indian tribe that lives, a native American tribe that lives in the woods. And there's like these people that are going missing. And some people think it's like this weird monster in the woods. And it has, it all comes back to like the army is hiding this monster in the, um, in the factory that they're working at. So they're they're kind of hiding this 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 thing from everybody that's terrorizing the town. Um, to be fair, everybody, I do not love the Confederacy. No, no, no. Just point that out. But I do love uh, time pieces like that, yeah. especially during that time period. Yeah. Um, I read Magic Number Four. That's a good book. Magic the Gathering. Uh, and then I have Infinite Frontier Number Two. Did you read this? Yes, I did. Um, yeah, which. Uh, like I don't even, it's it's crazy stuff. Um, Can I real quick just my favorite moment in this book? Yeah, because I don't know if Joshua Williamson picked up on this when he was writing it, but I feel like he did because he's a smart man. Mm-hmm. But there's literally a moment where they're talking about death metal. Yeah, and they're like, "So I'm told that a, an evil Batman came and just like changed everything." And then he looks over at Superman and goes, "So what happens when evil Superman comes?" Everybody's just like, well, this is awkward. Yeah, right. Um, I, w- I would like to think he knows. But also, I'm tr- oh, I just pulled up the page here. Um, there's like the, the fourth wall breaking of when they're in the House of Heroes where you have President Superman and uh, Thomas Wayne Batman. <laughs> And he says, we have a guidebook and everything on the multiverse. And he holds up the Grant Morrison guidebook. And yes, that was fantastic. And Thomas Wayne Batman says, I don't read comic books. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Um, lots of stuff are happening. We go to another Earth where, um, you know, I, it's it's like hard to, it's hard to explain what's going on. But, you know, Thomas Wayne Batman and... Um, the 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 Justice League is that what they're called? The Justice League with uh, President Superman. They're trying to find the pieces of the ship where they could like travel through the multiverse. They're called something different, and I'm zoning on it. Yeah, right I can't now. think of it. But basically, they're trying to look for pieces. And then uh, someone that I haven't seen since like Kingdom Come shows up, um, Magog, and he's like the defender of Earth twenty two. Um, well, we have on Earth Zero, we have Alan Scott and Obsidian. We know that Jade was killed. Um, they think Jade was killed, who is Obsidian's sister and Alan Scott's daughter. Um, and they're trying to figure out what happened. And we get a glimpse of like, okay, yeah, the JSA is back, but some of them are missing. We don't know who. Um, so Obsidian and and uh, Alan Scott are kind of like, okay, we're going to go kick some ass while we go look for Jade. And then we get the the side story of uh, Roy Harper with the Black Lantern ring, and he creates a bunch of targets to like start practicing with his ring, and uh, then he tries to like embrace the power and it goes wrong, and then he gets like the Omega symbol on him, and it looks like he's a minion of Dark Side now. So. And Dark- yeah, Dark Side definitely has a connection to the Black Lantern ring somehow. Yeah, and it says come back to be Black Lantern. That's probably the most interesting story so far. Um, and then we have this big reveal where uh, 
Captain Adam is back, but he's not the Captain Adam from our Earth. He's posing, and a reporter tries to like call him out on it, and he's like, "No, I can't. I can't let you know that uh, who I really am." And then he said, "Dark Side is," and he blows himself up. So that was kind of crazy. Uh, there's some crazy shit going on in this book. Um, there is. I I love how he's weaving it all together, yeah. though. I mean, it's great. And it's, I, I, I mean, like my confusion is just like we don't know how he's weaving it together, but all the stories are great. If you love the multiverse and love all that talk of like the different characters and all the cool things about it, it's a great book. And he's doing a great job of moments. Mm-hmm. Like I said, that that moment of like when's an evil Superman yeah, show up, right. and everybody's just like, Ew. yeah, yeah, like uh, <laughs> don't want to talk about it, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so actually, I'll start with a couple of Kickstarter books came in. Yep. And uh, you probably see me talk about this online. Tough stuff. Number oh, one. Yeah, dude, that looks awesome. I can't believe I missed out on getting that. Um, Kevin Delgado, no relation to Richard Delgado. Yep. Or Ricardo Delgado. Um, he's actually a creator in Buffalo, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, he also is a really good rapper as well and an artist so he made this book it's all about a alley cat who has a cybernetic arm is addicted to crack and has to fight against a real estate uh mogul uh who is called mr dingus and it takes place during spring break in florida in the 80s so it's got a real 80s like action vibe to it it's fun it's a good time and right at the end of the issue he ends it with like you know tough stuff will be back and names the next issue too I don't want to say because it kind of spoils the book, but really good. A lot of fun. Everybody should go support him. Uh, we had uh, this gentleman on the show, but we have we are Scarlet Twilight. Did you support this book? I can't remember. Um, no, I did not. I thought I thought I had it in digitally, but I think I, I missed think up. Sent, I think we sent or he sent us a copy digitally. I absolutely love this book and. Uh, as you can tell, I got both covers. Yeah, I, I love the one it's, on the left. Yeah, that old school uh, cover, this one. Mm-hmm. It's really it's cool. Great. So it's it's made to feel like an old, like a 30s comic, like in the way it, the story's done and everything, but it's written much better than most 30, 30s comics. Um, and it's kind of a Batman meets like supernatural kind of thing because mm-hmm. it's a guy who is in the city he's fighting crime we end up finding out that he's also a vampire and he's trying to find the, the evil villain in that and then when we get to the this is kind of a spoiler but fuck it um when we get to the end of the book it turns into batman meets captain america because he kind of gets put under and then wakes up 100 years in the future oh okay and so it gives me that real like Captain America vibe in the sense that it's a man out of time. Mm-hmm. But then there's that Batman the animated series vibe because everything in here just reminds me of like that show and yep. Gotham and the designs and everything. Really good. Check that one out too. Uh I'll go fast too because I read a bunch of stuff. Justice League Last Ride number three. It's really good. Uh it's tough to talk about because it kind of spoils the whole series if I talk about it too much. But everybody should read Justice League Last Ride. Uh and number three is an awesome issue. I so people were talking about this, so I just picked it up. Uh, the nice house in the lake. Mm-hmm. Did you read this at all? Uh, no, I didn't, but I did see it. So I read the first two issues. There's only two issues out. It's the newest uh, Tinian book, mm-hmm. and it's basically this guy meets all these. Like he lives lives through his life. He meets all these people, and we're introduced to him through this woman who meets him in a bar and they end up dating. And then it kind of fast forwards in the future where he invites all these people that he's known throughout his life to this nice house on the lake. And th- they get there and they're having a good time. And then he reveals to them that like, uh, not only is uh, the apocalypse happening, but this is the only safe place in all of earth. Mm. So if you leave this pr- this area that I've built out, you'll burn alive. And I'm an alien. Oh. See you guys. Wow. <laughs> And then from there, it's kind of like, not only is it them dealing with the fact they're living through the apocalypse, mm-hmm. but it's the character interactions between them as well that makes this book really interesting. Cool. So I would really recommend that book. Uh, Way of X number four is awesome. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Shadow number four as well. 
is a real turning point for the series. Uh, we get ve- the Venom symbiote that Peter had on him has taken over the Baxter building now. Oh. So it's like taking over the uh, the Fantastic Four and a bunch of others. That series is awesome. Uh, we talked about Skybound X. Uh, Sinister War number one. This is the big event coming out of the uh, Nick Spencer Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And this issue was good, but it was really just an introduction of like all the characters who's involved, which is obviously Spider-Man, uh, Mary Jane. And then we end up finding out that Mysterio was involved in some way. And we get our first like actual, actual reveal that Otto is back and he's created the Sinister Six again. Of course. And then the Savage Six show up and then another Sinister team shows up and that's where we get Sinister War. Uh, it's a good just like, you know, turn off your brain action comic. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of it's him wrapping up his Spider-Man series as we've talked about in the past. And Thor number 15 um, unfortunately, Nick Klein is now off this book, but uh, who takes over? Bandini takes over and does a fantastic job. So as we know, like Thor has been, there's been something wrong with the hammer. And so he has this like celebration with all of Asgard after his latest victory and gets like really drunk and kind of storms off mm-hmm. and then falls over and his, the hammer falls on him. And he can't get it off. So he's like, there's something wrong. He's really mad about it. Loki finds him. And that's when they kind of, they've introduced this before, but they reintroduced the idea like anybody can pick up the hammer Mm -hmm. because Loki comes in and takes it off him and throws it away. So we cut to Earth and the Avengers are fighting this big uh, alien invasion and they can't get by and Thor comes down and just kind of like stops the invasion and is like, Steve, I need to talk to you. Mm Mm-hmm. And Steve's like telling them how, you know, there's shit going on right now. So he thunders them all away. Blah, blah. <laughs> the crux of this issue is that Steve and Thor, Captain America and Thor, are sitting down talking. And Thor gives this monologue that is just amazing. Cool. Where he's like, one of the problems with being quote unquote immortal is that I've met people like you, Steve, that I love and respect but they're just a flicker in my life Mm -hmm. and they come and go. And like, he's he's basically going through all the problems with like what it's like to be someone that lives as long as he does. Right. That said, I could go on and on about what they talk about, but the, the conversations had here and what Donnie's doing with Thor and kind of attacking the ideas of what Thor goes through on a day to day in this, because this is the first issue in a new story is really awesome. Cool. Um, if, I don't know who's not reading Thor right now, but it's a great book. Mike, I think that's everything. <laughs> I, I actually missed a couple. I had Basilisk number one by Mr. Cullen Bunn. Um, Cause I, oh. I read hard copies of those. I just don't have them here. That's a really good book. Um, and then beyond the breach is a new aftershock. Number one, a uh, really interesting book about a woman who's uh, had like just found out that her uh, husband or fiance was cheating on her. So she's like, driving off to the woods to like get away from her life for a little bit. And she crashes her car. And when she wakes up, she's in like this other world of these creatures that are like attacking another family and really crazy. Like, like almost like the mist style, like really brutally killing people and crazy looking monsters um, from like Stephen King's the mist. And she doesn't know what's going on, but she like crosses this other world. And there's like, there's not just evil creatures. She finds this like little, um, like almost like Ewok creature. Uh, it's kind of cute and it has like a little spear and is like trying to attack the monsters for her. Um, but she like, it's almost like she crossed over into another world. Uh, and she finds this little boy whose father dies and he like the the father's like calling for him and it ends up being like his father, her his the little boy's father is like this giant monster now. So. Something's going on. I don't know if she's still on Earth in another dimension or something, but it was a pretty crazy first issue, and it's called uh, "Beyond the Breach" by Aftershock. So, I've been hearing a lot of good things about that book. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, but that's all I had. That's all I had too, Mike. So, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me at Fortress Ricker on Twitter. Where can they find you and or the show? Well, you can find me at Fortress Chris on Twitter, and they can find the show at Fortress Comics underscore on Twitter or at FortressComicNews.com. 
Remember, everybody, to give us five-star reviews on whatever podcatcher you use. Like, subscribe, share, comment down below on the YouTubes. And if you want to go to the extra mile, patreon.com slash Fortress Comics. Uh, everybody, end of August, August 21st, I am going to be at Anchor Con in Clayton, New York. Um, come by and I'll be there with my good buddy Joe. We'll be selling our wares and having a good time. So come find us, check us out. And there's other guests as well. I Somebody I should remember off the top of my head is going that I really want to meet. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. But thank you all so much for listening. And we'll see you all here next week. 